a lot of good vibes from the team. We know we should have won that game. And at the same time, you do those little things, those longer stretches of maybe not playing, you know, smart, crisp basketball on both ends. We can shorten those and make the, the good stretches longer. I think we'll be in much better shape, but the vibes were good. A lot of that has to do with just the attitude of the players and our draft picks are good guys too. So they're picking up the energy for us too. How would you describe uh, Domingo's personality and how he's interacting with him? You know, without coaching against him in the in the bubble last year, I you know I just very stone faced and competing. I know he was playing hard, but now I see he has some personality. I've been joking with him a little bit. I was just telling him, hey, get off the floor, protect your body. He's like showing him some. I said, hey, these are some old man stretches. You're probably gonna be doing these in five years. Uh, but he's got some personality. I like I like being around him and poking with him a little bit. A little bit. He had one of his best games in the bubble against you guys in that first game. Yes, he did. What did you like during that game? What, what, what was your thought process uh, seeing just how kind of dominant he was that time? I was like, first of all, can we get him off the block and out of the paint because he was so effective? Um, and then rebounding the ball that was like our very first game, so we hadn't had really hadn't really established like the principles around transition defense. So we weren't picking him up, and then you know when he gets a full head of steam. It would be hard to stop him. So I was always impressed with the physicality, the ability to change ends, whether it's offense or defense, you know, that transition. Um, and we just try to keep him out of the paint and make him shoot long jumpers. That was going to be the most effective thing. Other teams are going to do the same thing, so you got to continue to work on his footwork and his shooting, but he will. He's a hard worker. When, when the Warriors drafted him, did you think back to that game at all? And just because he had a really strong start to the bubble and then, you know, had some struggles later on, but did you think if we can tap into that, Absolutely. That he can be. When I saw him still on the board, I was like, oh man, we might have a chance to get him. Um, and I just liked how intriguing he was in terms of his size, his versatility. Um, and he's got a pretty good feel to be a young kid. He just he just needs more game experience, more reps, and some of those things that we really value in him will, will come start to come out. Did you tell the front office those things that you were just talking about in the pre-draft process when they were considering doing this? You know, he didn't work out for us. I mean, we had a lot of debriefs around the guys that we saw. Um, but he was one I didn't specifically speak to, but I did, you know, I, I talked to a little a few of the front office people after the G League bubble. I was like, this dude's a specimen, somebody we should definitely take a look at. Yeah. I thought um, Moody, can you tell us anything about his personality? Yeah, I, Moody's, uh, they're both pretty quiet, um, but I think it's also because they're young uh, and maybe they, being the youngest guys, you know, 18, 19 years old with guys who've been doing this four or five years, even some a little older, they may, may not feel the the ability to speak speak up, but they do have personality. I, I think Moses also has the ability to laugh at himself, which is always good. You're going to make mistakes in this game, um, and he's allowed me to coach him. I've gotten on him, you know, after a couple mistakes. I've also put my arm around him. He's been receptive to everything, so I love his attitude, his approach. I know with Kaminga, he's obviously getting the ball a lot. He's not going to get the ball this much, you know, playing with the other guys. It kind of feels like Moody is sort of playing that role. He might not get as many shots, but he's playing a very similar role to what he's going to play. Is that kind of been a focus? Yeah, and not necessarily something that we specifically talked about with him, but I have been saying to the guys when we have those talented players, Steph, Clay, Draymond, like those are the guys that are the focus. And so it's really important at that point five mentality, like being able to make quick decisions and know who you're playing with is going to be even more important. And so just encourage them to think in that way. And at the same time, you got to be aggressive. Sometimes you got to let your game come out, even if the coach, I me, mean, doesn't like it necessarily. And then we can work on those other things and make sure he fits into what we're doing when we get into the NBA season. And with Kaminga, has like screen setting and like getting out of these roles been a priority? Definitely. Uh, I think sometimes you go set a screen and he'll pop because that's the easiest thing. Where the physicality of him rolling, he takes two people with him. So a, a lot of it is screening and spacing the floor and keeping the paint open, which he's going to have to do for step and play. And he can learn that right here. It's a good experience for him to, to start to learn some of those lessons. Is there, has there been anyone that's been a pleasant surprise for you so far, Summer League? Like either uh, either in game or in practice, a uh, guy who might be an NBA player, but it doesn't have a big game right now? I mean, Kyle Guy, is, he's a pro. I mean, in my eyes, uh, it's, it's great to have his versatility as a playmaker and a shooter. Cam Oliver is, a, is an NBA athlete for sure. Um, still trying to put some things together in terms of the mental approach. Um, and then Colby Ross last night was you know, our most effective guy in terms of hitting the paint. Um, I know he had a really good career in college and he scored as well as assisted. And if he can continue to do those things, I don't know if the ceiling is an NBA player, but he's gonna be well on his way because he knows how to play. So those would be the three guys that stood out. What about Jacoby McLaughlin? 
to score obviously you know forgetting about him like his pace has been really good I think because he's always been a scoring guard he's learning how to distribute as well as be aggressive um, and so those are things that he can still pick up but he's also like Moses I said before like he's been very coachable um, and I think he's gotten better each game the ball pressure on defense is what I've been most impressed with with him because he's a pretty good athlete and then just making the right reads and figuring out a way to be aggressive and to distribute on the offense game. Can you tell just coaching Moses that he's been around great players? He was on the greatest high school team ever with, um, with Kate Cunningham and Scotty Barnes. Do you think that experience can help him be a complimentary piece at the NBA level right away? Yeah, because he had to play a role. He had to fill a role before he kind of grew his, uh, his abilities. Um, he had to fit in. And so I think that always is helpful for a guy who's done it at different levels. It hasn't always been about him. Um, and clearly he's talented. Um, but I think to stick in the NBA, role acceptance is a really important thing. Most guys, even on their first, con maybe their second contracts don't get that. But I think he's on his way just because of the IQ, uh, his ability to play off of other guys. And I think he's an unselfish kid. It's not about him, it's about the team. He feels like if he's doing his job, he's going to help the team win. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.